this is really the start of the Faraday journey and the PEA provides the sort of springboard in which now to, to launch all, all the upside. And, and what was also encouraging for us that, you know, when you consider this high inflationary environment that we're in, you know, there's a lot of projects around the world that are sort of underwater with the current cost profile. And so to come in with um, a robust project um, was very encouraging. Welcome to the Assay TV. We're delighted to be here today with Paul Harbage, CEO of Faraday Copper. Faraday Copper is a Canadian exploration company focused on advancing its flagship Copper Creek project in Arizona. So thank you so much for joining us, Paul. It's great to have you here. Great to be here, Alice. Thank you. Great. So, Paul, since this is your first time uh, joining us here on the Assay TV, perhaps we could start with a with a bit of a intro to Faraday Copper. So, yeah, if you wouldn't mind giving us an overview of the company and, and of the Co Copper Creek project, that would be great. Yeah, thank you, Alice. And as you pointed out in, in your introduction, we're a Canadian exploration and development company with our flagship property being Copper Creek in Arizona. It's one of the largest undeveloped copper resources in the United States with 4.2 billion pounds of measured and indicated uh, copper uh, and almost 5 billion pounds in, in all categories of resources. We, we've got a lot of exploration upside uh, beyond that uh, resource. Uh, we delivered an initial PEA earlier this year, which is the foundation on which to build on. Um, and then we're, we're well capitalized. We've got $20 million in the bank, which will see us deliver on our key milestones over the next 12 months, which include a, a 20,000 meter drill program due to start, uh, or which has actually started uh, this month. Um, and we've got additional work in terms of a gold program, uh, and looking to update our technical studies as we go into 2025. Great, thank you, Paul. And um, obviously, you've mentioned your 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 project space in Arizona. So, what 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 makes the jurisdiction attractive for for investment? We know it's a great location. Um, it's in a, obviously a tier one uh, jurisdiction. Um, it's always rated as one of the, the, the best in, investment locations in the world, that is Arizona. It's got great infrastructure, whether it's roads, rail, power, access to water, skilled labor force. Um, and so, yeah, great jurisdiction. You know, we don't have issues with, uh, you know, altitude or, or remoteness. Um, so, yeah, great place to work. Um, you, you mentioned it briefly earlier, but uh, your, your 2023 PEA for the Copper Creek project is the base case for this project. So what's your strategy for improving the economics of the project with the next technical report? Yeah, no, I think what, what was uh, exciting for us is that this is really the start of the Faraday journey and the PEA provides the sort of springboard in which now to, to launch all, all the upside. And, and what was also encouraging for us that, you know, when you consider this high inflationary environment that we're in, you know, there's a lot of projects around the world that are sort of underwater with the current cost profile. And so to come in with um, a robust project um, was very encouraging. And now it's about layering on that upside, firstly, through the drill bit. And, um, you know, we've got a very underexplored uh, district. And what I find amazing as, as an explorer my, myself is that 95% of all the drilling done on the project has been done on, on the resource. And so in, in the wider project area, it's it's underexplored. And, and as an example, we've got over 400 breaches that have been mapped at surface, only 35 have had a drill hole and just 17 are in the resource. So we've got many more to go out there and test. And then also we're looking at, at engineering studies. So looking at throughput, being able to increase that throughput from the base case of 30,000 tons per day, as well as looking at the resource expansion through the drill bit, then metallurgical studies, looking at grind size and, and throughput. Great, thank you. It sounds sounds great. And um, you you also, at the start of this month, I believe you, you released the assay results of the gold programme. So can you explain a little bit about what the gold programme is and, and why, why you're excited about it? No, certainly. I mean, th this is something uh, gold has not been captured on the project before. Previous workers didn't assay the core for gold. And in our recent drilling, you know, we've really taken over the company and been managing the last two years. And so our recent drilling, we assayed for a whole suite of elements, including gold, and saw that we got an, a gold enrichment in, in certain phases of the mineralization. And so at the moment, gold isn't captured in the mineral resource. 
and we see it as a significant uh, value add as a byproduct into the copper concentrate. And so we're busy reassaying core uh, or historical material to, to enable us to get the data coverage to include gold in the in the mineral in future mineral resources and then we've got the metallurgical work going on to look at how the gold will will be recovered and and uh, be collected in the copper concentrate but certainly very exciting uh, project to be involved with in terms of adding additional value to to the project absolutely thank you and and what what are the next steps for the project so you know over the next few months um what, what should investors be looking out for in terms of your news flow so, um, so last week we started a 20,000 metre drill programme and that's got three three aims to it. One is making new discoveries um, in, a, in our bigger property portfolio. Um, two, uh, looking at immediate resource expansion, so both um, open pit and underground. And then also looking at, we've got our high grade zones within the underground that have not fully demarcated and delineated. And so we're going to be drill testing those. So it's a threefold approach to that program. So, you know, investors can, will start to see, you know, further or, or drill results coming out in the next few weeks. And then obviously with the gold program ongoing, you know, now that we've done one breccia for the gold, we're working through um, a pipeline of, of other breccias for gold. And so investors can expect to see more gold results coming out as, as we progress that project. And then we've got the metallurgical programs that are looking at, um, therefore, the, the throughput Great, great. Sounds like some exciting things on the horizon. Um, and, you know, from a, if we take a step back from a, from a more holistic kind of point of view, um, you know, from market perspective, you know, we're seeing projections that the global copper demand, we're seeing projections that global copper demand could almost double to 50 million tonnes annually by 2035. Uh, you know, how do you see this play, playing out? Will we, will we see a deficit in copper? I think uh, in the short term, there's some definite headwinds in the copper market. And particularly with the high interest rates, then, you know, that's in inhibiting in growth and, and manufacturing and, and particularly with the slowdown in China. Um, but I think, you know, you know, over the longer term, you know, with this clean energy transition, you know, through whether it's electric vehicles, solar generation, wind farms, you know, up, upgrading of, of the electrical grid, then, you know, that's really going to push that that copper demand. But I think, the, you know, you talk about deficit. I mean, I think the world has a way of, of equalizing things. And I think the the um, the actual clean energy transition is probably going to be a lot slower than than people work out. I mean, you're already seeing in the UK with the government, you know, renagging on on the electric vehicle or the the stopping of, of production of combustion engines, you know, pushing that out by five years, you know, opening up new oil and gas. I mean, it's it's, you know, whenever you affect change, you put people out of their comfort zone and and um, and people say no. And so there's barriers, you know, you, we're, you know, we're seeing it in in um, in mining that, you know, I think mining is still almost viewed a bit like oil and gas and that we're a, a dirty, polluting industry. But, you know, without the mining, we're not going to get the metals in which to effect this energy transition. So I think it's gonna be, it's not gonna be a straight line sort of growth. It's gonna be a bit of a, a, a rocky, um, you know, few years ahead of us as we come out of this economic crisis. But ultimately, you know, copper is gonna be the metal of choice for this green transition. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it sounds like, however, it, however it plays out, um, you guys are well positioned to to benefit from from the energy transition. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to hearing more from you over the next few months. Thank you so Thank much you for all. for joining us today, Paul. It's been great to have you here. Yeah. Thank you, Alice.